Hello and welcome to a special quick look at Bloodstained Ritual of the Night for the Nintendo Switch. So this game was released in June 2019 and I figured it would be a good time to look at the game since it's going. this video is going up on Halloween. So happy Halloween, first of all. Second of all, this is the Switch version which is interesting, and I want to take a moment to talk about the Switch version. So this is going to be kind of a mixture of a quick look at the game, spoiler-free, along with a bit of a discussion, completely unscripted. So, in short, this game is really good, it's got really high reviews on all platforms except Nintendo Switch. It's a little bit of a bad port. The Frame rate is halved, it's 60 on everything except Switch, it's 30 on Switch, so it's not as smooth. There's noticeable input lag, which they are currently working on. The graphics of course are worse, as to be expected, effects quality is lowered, and so on and so forth. And I don't think I can fully recommend the Switch version when it's the same price as all the other versions. I own it on Switch because I actually have a limited run copy of Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, so I, which is the 8-bit styled, uh, I guess, spiritual successor to the classic Castlevanias that's kind of a spin-off as part of the Kickstarter, so I want to have both on Switch for consistency, but otherwise I would not recommend this version. I don't think portability is worth the trade-offs in graphics and uh, performance. Apparently the frame rate being 30 might not seem too bad right now, but something that they are currently trying to fix is the game kind of gets worse as you go along. In later areas it lags a lot. In fact it lags on PS4 and Xbox One from what I recall hearing. And so you can definitely expect it to lag on Switch as well. So yeah, I can't entirely recommend Switch version yet, but the patch is slated for November, so hopefully Hopefully, uh, they actually get it out on time, because that was their estimated uh, release date, but they all were also planning to release patches much sooner. They were planning to do a bunch of really tiny incremental patches, but they decided to just lump everything together, so the wait is really long. <laughs> As a result, some bugs on PS4 and Xbox One took a long time to be addressed, and I'm not 100% sure if those have ever been fixed. Um, there's a notable glitch where if you check a bookshelf on PS4, the game will crash. Uh, as far as I know, they haven't addressed that yet, but they might have. Again, I obviously don't have both versions to, to verify this information. Yeah, it's a, a classic Metroidvania style Castlevania. You have a uh, fairly non-linear exploration. You have platforming, the music. I think they got the original composer back as well, um, and the original artist. So yeah, it's a really good game, I just can't quite recommend this port yet. But the reason I decided to play it now instead of until after they patched it was because I wanted to also discuss ports in general. 2019 has been an interesting year to follow multi-platform releases because there have been some really good examples of ports and also some really bad examples and I kind of wanted to go over a few along with Bloodstained since this is the notable, one of the notable examples of a bad port specifically for Switch. So the next gen consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox are planned to be released next year. Which is interesting because I've noticed the quality of ports have gone down this year specifically. A lot of games are running worse. A lot of games that used to that seem like they shouldn't have that many problems are definitely having problems because PC gaming is advancing and consoles are falling behind. So this update is coming at a really good time. A good example is Call of Duty, uh, which apparently doesn't run super smoothly on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, it does a little bit better on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, but still not a locked 60 frames per second. 
which also, uh, hopefully, that means with the rumors of back compatibility, the uh, game may run better. That's the hope I have that back compatible games will run better, like they do on Xbox One X currently. If you pop it in an original 360 title, you can actually tend to get better. You actually tend to get better performance and visuals, like higher resolutions, upscaled. So I'm hoping the next consoles do the same thing. Other notable ports of the year are actually Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, for starters. In that it's a really good port on everything. And what I gather is kind of made with the Switch in mind, so it actually runs really well on everything. The Switch version does have some dips here and there, but since that version is almost a lock 60, you can definitely expect the other consoles in PC to be a consistent 60, which is cool. I hear it's really good too, as someone who likes DKC, I am definitely intrigued in trying that out at some point. I think another interesting port is Borderlands, which I hear is actually slightly better on last gen. Not last gen, but on base consoles. Base consoles were made with a frame rate cap in mind at 30, uh, so the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X struggle a little bit with Borderlands 3, from what I recall. Maybe they fixed it by now, but the last I heard was the frame rate is not great on the enhanced consoles. Uh, because they try to aim for 60 and it doesn't quite hit that very well. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting time because this feels like kind of an interim year. We're kind of just waiting for the next consoles. And thus, I feel like a lot of ports aren't living up to their full potential. Games like this obviously aren't too intense to run, which is why I feel like it's actually a little bit more surprising that it doesn't run well. Same goes for Hat in Time, uh, which for the record is one of my favorite games from 2017, so when I say the console versions of a Hat in Time are really bad, um, that's on top of the fact that I still really like that game. I bought it on PS4 because I wasn't sure if my PC could run it, because the minimum specs for Hat in Time are really high, and turns out it struggles. But PS4 hasn't received a single patch, and does have some problems. I'm also just going in a loop for the record to avoid spoiling new areas. This is the starting area of Bloodstained, so I just to avoid spoiling I'm just kinda, kinda going through a circle. Um, but yeah, with Hat in Time, it's definitely a bit rough on PC if you don't have like a really high-end PC. I have an Intel i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and it struggles. And yet the uh, newly released Yakuza Metro, I guess it's not newly released, it's been out for a while. Um, it runs really badly on my computer. It drops to like a couple frames per second at best. Maybe a frame every every few seconds. So I kind of hope the DLC eventually comes to consoles. They've confirmed it for Switch, not for PS4. So I'm hoping now that the Switch version is done, now that the content updates are done, we can actually finally get some fixes to a hand in time on PS4, which is the version I own. I'm not going to rebuy it on Switch because I hear that version has problems as well. And I, I'm kind of confused by why that game runs so poorly. Why it requires such high specs, because it doesn't feel like a very intense game. Yet it requires a lot to power through it. I don't know if you noticed, but the, the enemy on the right had a bit of a flicker when you spawned in. Uh, that's probably only on Switch, I'm guessing. Or probably some weird quirk. But with some games like The Outer Worlds not holding a solid frame rate, part of me is wondering how much of it's because this gen. I mean, people's reactions to frame rate nowadays. I wonder how much of it is because we've gotten used to it. We've gotten used to really stable frame rates. Because looking back, I can't really think of many games on PS3 and 360 that actually ran well. Um. 
Usually exclusives would hold the frame rates pretty well, but a lot of third party games would drop really badly. Uh, the first example to come to mind is Assassin's Creed, which always has frame rate problems, it feels like. So, I feel like people were kind of just used to low frame rates back in that console gen, but this gen, everyone's so used to really solid frame rates that at the tail end, now that PC games are really soaring past where consoles are, it's becoming really obvious how un how much they're underperforming. And that's without like ray tracing or as intense effects. Like they're kind of on the level of mid-level PCs and not even like high-end graphics, but a lot of console games still struggle. So I do think the next gen will help a lot. Again, I'm hoping that the consoles help with some performance problems, like with the back compatibility programs we have now. And if not, um, again, that's assuming we need to get back compatibility. I think it's confirmed for Xbox. I don't know if it's directly confirmed for PS5 yet. I hope it is. There's a rumor going around that it will have back compatibility to everything. And I think that would be an amazing chance to really develop a system that can kind of brute force old games. A lot of PS3 games in particular, Metal Gear Solid 4, you know, that's actually a really good example. That game is kind of considered a masterpiece, but it runs really poorly. And I think it's just because we, we kind of are the way spoiled by how good frame rates have been this gen until recently, so the, the outliers really stand out. Personally, I kind of I can play a game with a, a rough frame rate. I can play games that drop into the 40 range usually. If a game's at 60, I don't notice that much. Resident Evil 2 is a perfect example because I love that game, but I will not. Uh, say it, it holds a frame rate well in any capacity. On base PS4, it frequently drops to 40. I can feel it's kind of low, but the whole game is enjoyable enough that I don't mind the lower frame rate. Um, with games in the 20 range, then it becomes a little bit more of a problem. If this game started dropping frames, I would definitely notice because it's only at 30, so the, the slow down would be a lot more apparent. But yeah, in the last gen where everything ran at basically 30, uh, and not very well, I do feel like it is, in retrospect, rather amazing how far games have come. Graphically is one thing, but in terms of just locked performance is a whole nother thing. So while graphics, I think, are actually in a really good place right now, in terms of realism and effects and lighting, um, I think stability is kind of what I would like to see really come out of this next gen. Think of like, uh, games that are photorealistic but have 30 frames per second caps. Like I would love to see like, an HD port remaster of Spider-Man from last year, except at 60 FPS, I think that would be really cool. So now that graphics as a whole, I feel like- also this is a weird bug in Bloodstained. If you aren't holding B, you'll fall through. Uh, so with some some of the slowdown later on, it gets really bad because uh, loading times can get really long, apparently. I don't know if they fixed that yet, or if that's coming in the November update, but apparently at some points, loading between screens gets really annoying on Switch and thus accidentally falling through uh, an entrance, it adds up over a lot, over a bit of time. Yeah, those are some of my quick thoughts on console ports and hopes for next gen. I do think gaming is kind of reaching a point where there's not much farther they can go in terms of realism, so again, I do think the big push this gen should be performance. I know they've talked about 120 FPS, which sounds fantastic to me, because I always value frame rate over uh, graphical quality. If a game has a performance mode, I'll almost always use that because I just prefer the higher frame rate. 
to looking pretty. I only have a 1080p television anyway, so it's not like that big of a deal that I can't run the game at 4K. But in any case, uh, yeah, that was a quick look at Bloodstained. I do recommend the game if you have uh, PS4, Xbox One, or PC. A little bit cautiously on the, the non-PC side because of how rocky uh, the ports generally were. But apparently PS4 is mostly fine, and Xbox as well. And Switch, I would say wait until the end of November. Maybe the patch will help, I hope it does. Uh, but definitely, probably not right now. In any case, um, thank you for watching. I know I've just been kind of rambling. This was, yeah, a completely unscripted discussion. So if uh, you enjoyed the, the recent discussions, because I've been trying to do more reviews and discussion type videos, uh, thank you for watching. And... Uh, let me know in the comments and like the video and all that if you want to see more videos like this.